Welcome to AH University, brought to you by Aggressive Hydraulics. Tony Kasasa, the Engineering Manager at Aggressive Hydraulics, leads this five-part series that will include the following topics, bearing and bushing basics, key characteristics, stress, types, and implementation. This fifth video concludes this series by giving a few examples of how bearings and bushings can be implemented on hydraulic cylinders. So spherical bearings, question for the audience. Can we fit a one inch pin inside a one inch spherical bearing? No, or probably not. So spherical bearings are nominal to undersize. So again, say we have a one inch bearing at its very largest, the hole in that spherical bearing is going to be one inch. And the nominal pin is, could be one inch, right at one inch. And the one inch exact pin does not go in an exact one inch hole. Uh, so when we talk about spherical bearings, when we talk about pins for them, the pins need to be undersized. So implementation, also known as how do we use, how do we put bushings into cylinders? Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about here, about four things, press fit, grease flow, pin design, and pin wipers. So press fit, we got a bushing and we got a mount, but we got a OD of a bushing that's 2.251 to 252. And we have a hole in the mount that's been machined to 248 to 250. So we have a bigger bushing than we have the hole. So relative to our last conversations about pins, when in the case of the pin, we don't want that. We don't want a pin that's bigger than the bushing hole. But when we talk about press fit, it is what we do want because we want to put that bushing in but we don't want it to come out. So we have a little aggressive hydraulics bushing press calculator that calculates, given these numbers, the bushing ID or bushing OD, which is bigger than the mount ID. We also put in the ID of the bushing because that shrinks when we push it in. And it tells us if we have a good design for our press fit or not, because we want enough that it doesn't fall out but not so much that we damage the bushing or the mount. Uh, if we had a cylinder pin mount with no bushing, typically we would design that ID for the pin hole at 15 thousandths over the nominal size, which gives us clearance for that nominal size pin to go through and a little bit of slot for any distortion. Press fit, we have a much tighter tolerance. so. Uh, the example we gave is two thousandths in terms of the window of, of what the tolerance of that mount can be. Uh, so when we think about making that part, making that mount, we have to account for increased machining time to hold that tighter tolerance. It's pretty cheap and quick to blast a hole through that you can have a 15 thousandths tolerance on. It takes a little more time and care to achieve two thousandths. Uh, in addition, it may be required to bore that hole after welding. We know that when we weld things, it tends to distort them. So we might machine a mount with a 2000 tolerance. But if we were to then weld that mount, it may distort and no longer uh, be the right tolerance. So it may be necessary to bore it after welding. And when we talk about press fit, what kind of tool would we use to press the bushing into the mount? Uh, if it's small and not too much force is used, we might use an arbor press like the one on the left, where the operator just grabs the lever and pulls it down and it presses the bushing into the mount. Uh, if more force is required, you might need hydraulic force. Uh, like the example on the right, the red one, where there's a hydraulic cylinder. And we know hydraulic cylinders have lots of pushing force, so it can push the bushing into the mount. Another note is alignment is key. When we're putting that bushing in, um, we want to make sure that it is aligned with the hole and it doesn't go in crooked. We've been doing some work to make some tools to ensure those are properly aligned. So grease grooves. Uh, so we've seen some pictures with some grease grooves in it. Uh, here's a little snip from the Reliable Bronze catalog with lots of different types of grease grooves, most of which we don't use. Uh, so the figure eight which if you looked inside it looked like a figure eight or the double figure eight, uh, like this one in the middle here. 
provides the best distribution. The reason it's not always used is it is a bit more expensive to machine, uh, a little bit trickier in terms of the machining programming. Uh, the straight and the circular, like these examples over on the far right, are pretty basic. Uh, it's just milling a slot or turning a circular groove. So they're pretty quick and cheap to make, but they don't distribute the grease as well. So next audience participation question, how does grease get to the ID? Maybe if we have a groove. So a lot of these grooves, we see that it it's uh, like this circular one here. How is grease going to get to that circular groove? So we got a few different examples we run through, one of which is a hole. Uh, so here we have an example with a spring tension bushing. Uh, we see this grease circuit in the middle. Uh, we see, if you can maybe see, so one's highlighted in blue, the other's not, but we have no gap between them. So those bushings are butted right up together in the middle of the mount. But we have a chamfer on the OD. We got a Right in here, we have grooves on the, or not grooves, but a chamfer on the outside edge. And of course, we talked about how with the split tension bushing between the teeth, we have that split path. So that chamfer is gonna allow grease to come around and then follow along this path to distribute itself along the length of the bushing. So here's another example here with two bronze bushings. Again, we have grease groove, Grease zerk in the middle. In this case, there's a gap in between them. So each one's been pushed in, but they're not butted up together. And we have a spiral groove that goes right to the edge. So the spiral groove provides a place for it to come in, and then it can follow that spiral all the way around. This one also happens to have pin wipers, which keep the contamination out, but also keep the grease in. This one with the spiral brushing also has a notch in the face and the OD chamfer. So if they were butted up together, kind of like the example with the spring tension bushing, uh, but the spring tension bushing had the gap with the fingers, this one has a notch in the face to allow oil to get in and hit that spiral groove. So here's an example with a single bronze bushing. So single solid all the way through, grease circ hole through the mount and then a hole as Steve mentioned uh, right through our bushing and this one just has a circular groove in the middle to allow it to distribute all the way around and then relies on the clearance between the pin and the bushing to distribute outward. Another little different example sometimes the pin has a grease fitting in it and it has a hole down the middle cross holes and, the, and that's the way the grease flows. So it would come in the grease circ, down the middle, and then there'd be cross holes where these bushings are to distribute the grease there. Typically, this would be something supplied by the customer, not by us. So speaking of pins, uh, one note about pin design and hardness. Uh, so we typically want the hardness of the bushing to be different than the hardness of the pin. Early on, we had the example of the galling. Uh, that's typically what happens, especially if the pin and the bushing are from the same material or material of the same hardness. Uh, as, they, as there's force and there's movement, is it tends to want to weld together. If we have a harder pin, it's going to be the bushing that wears first. If we have a harder bushing, it's going to be the pin that wears first. So a lot of times it's customer discussion with question with the customer or an engineering design question of which do you want to wear first? Do you want the pin to wear out? And once it's worn, discard it and get a new pin? Or do you want the bushing to wear out? And when it's worn, push it out, push a new bushing in. I mentioned pin wipers with the other one. So this is a type of a seal. Uh, provides some sealing the both ways. Uh, so keeping contamination out. So in a dirty, dusty environment, could be keeping that dirt and dust out, could be keeping moisture out, uh, but it's also functioning to keep the grease in. So if we don't have a pin wiper, there's really nothing that keeps the grease from coming out between the gap between the bearing and the pin, so that pin wiper keeps it in. The same thing when we talk about spherical bearings, 
Uh, we talked about seals. We have the ball and the race. We have the grease hole. So we would have a grease circuit out here. Grease comes in. Grease is that surface. Uh, if we have a sealed bearing, those seals are going to keep the grease in. Likewise, also keeps the dust and the debris and the moisture out. So with all these benefits we talked about, question is, should every cylinder have a bushing and a bearing? I think probably the only answer there is cost. You know, all these things we talked about, they contribute to the cost of a cylinder. In some light duty applications, it's not really needed. Yeah, maybe over time the bushing or the, without a bushing, the pin mount is going to wear out. But maybe it's not going to wear out for the life of the cylinder because it's infrequently used or it's used at low loads. But there's probably a lot more applications that could benefit from a bushing or a bearing to extend the service boy. This concludes the hydraulic cylinder bushing and bearing presentation. Contact us today to start your purpose-built process. Mm -hmm.